It's the season finale weekend in the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series, and there is a title to be decided in Euro NASCAR 2. It's been a story of Alberto Nasca in the 88 car, bringing with him his plethora of YouTube supporters. And he's also been bringing the fight to the established Euro NASCAR competitors. He is our championship leader. Let's see how he got to this point. It was the season opener at the Valencia circuit in Spain. Vladimir Osiortis claiming the first win of the season. And then Alberto Nasca claimed the second win, his first of the year. And he would continue on with some great form. Uh, on the Brands Hatch weekend, taking a win in race one, but in race two, in overtime no less, Liam Hazemans took a late victory, his first of the year, and that would establish him potentially as a championship challenger. Success again for Nasca at Vallelunga. But this man, Hazemans, once again found his way to the top step in race two. The Most weekend was something of one to forget, uh, for Hazemans, however, it was glory all around, though, for Nasca. A double victory weekend for the Italian. On to Zolder, though, and Nasca's bad luck would finally strike. A gearbox issue in race one hampered both races for the driver of the 88 car. Meanwhile, the 50 driver, Liam Hazemans, secured a double victory, putting him within 13 points of Alberto Nasca in the championship. So then two races for these cars and drivers, 14 laps of racing in both competitions. So 28 laps left for Nasca and Hazemans to duel out the championship here at this 2.58 mile, 4.168 kilometer circuit, full of twists and turns and high speed corners that you can take with full bravery. And there was no one braver in qualifying than Vladimir Osiortis, who put the car on pole. Keep consistency now all the eyes to the races. The most important thing, double points. We are we are fast, we have to keep it, and we will achieve our goal. So then it is Siortis on the pole position. Then he will be working hard to try and move his way through the order. Let's see if he can hold on to the pole position. He's had a lot of pole positions this year, but not a great many victories. And he's going to look to rectify that this weekend here at the Automotodrom Grobnik. He's got the title contenders all around him, though. He's got Nasca behind him, and he's got Hazemans alongside him as we get started and go racing here at the Automotodrom Grobnik. You're NASCAR 2's championship decider. And look at Hazemans. He has the outside line. It's side by side between the two of them as they go out of turn two. Who will have the lead into turn three? It's Hazemans. Siortis demoted to third place then. Liam Hazemans held on around the outside, and our championship challenges are now one and two at the sharp end of the order. Nasca will be looking to try and find a way past Hazemans. He said he wasn't confident in the balance of the car coming into this weekend. He said in qualifying the car did not feel right. The tyres pressures may not have been correct for the 88 and I think they've been working to try and improve the car. There's only so much you can do. Limited track time uh, post-qualifying for these drivers. And look at Nasca deep on the brakes. He's trying to go around the outside of Hazemans. Can he do it? He's got to be cognizant of Siortis behind as well. Oh, and he was very close to the grass there. All over the curves going through 14 and 15. Hazemans holds on to the lead for the time being at least. 13 points between them coming into this one. It's a double points round. So therefore it's 80 points for the lead and 70 for second place. So if things were to finish as they are right now, Hazemans would reduce that gap by 10 points. It would be three points between them going into the title decider. And it would be just one point between them if Siortis can find a way past Nasca as well. So Hazemans is no doubt going to be rooting for Siortis to not only keep Nasca busy and allow him to build a lead, but also if he gets past to give him an even greater shot at the championship on the Sunday. 
close run stuff then in the early stages of Euronascar 2's first race of the weekend into the late afternoon sun they are racing and Melvin de Groot and Claudio Remigio Capelli fighting for the legend honours here de Groot the team Blake Molen racer has been promising this year and he's currently on his way uh, towards what could be a Legends Trophy Championship here. A top five result overall and a, and a winning class would certainly do him a great many favours in that regard. Vladimir Osiortsis then in the five car chasing down Alberto Nasca. There's just a couple of car lengths emerging between Nasca and Hazeman's up ahead. Nasca drifts it wide there. Just about gets back to the apex, but certainly Siortis was having a speculative look to the inside. Miro Siortis, the Cypriot racer, he's only had one win this year. But he's had numerous pole positions, five of them. He would so, so love to co convert this one into a race win, but doesn't look like that's forthcoming right now. Nasker is doing a good job of defending. Oh, but he got a bit on the grass there. And has that affected his run onto the main straight? We just saw Nasker with a wheel on the grass. Can the number five driver, Vladimir Osiortis, find a way by? I'm not sure he's going to be close enough after all. You've got Dubek there in fourth place, and behind him is Melvin de Groot. Claudio Remigio Capelli has fallen a little bit down the order then, and he's got Thomas Ponton for company. Oh, locking up there is Capelli, and he just about gets the car stopped for the corner, but that's not looking fully comfortable for the driver of the 16, is it? He's having to work hard to keep that car on the road by the looks of it, much less keep the 23 behind him. That 16 car, a Mark I racing entry. Ponsonen racing under the team Blakemode and Banner, and a little bit of contact between the two of them. Ponsonen eager to get by, but it hasn't worked out for him just yet. We ride on board with the Finnish racer in the rookie class. Claudio Remigio Capelli, also a rookie. He's in a legend class as a dint of his age, and he's in rookie as a dint of his experience. He locks up there. And that's going to compromise his run through all of these corners. Surely this is the opportunity that Pontonen needs. Is he going to get to the inside? At the Zagreb bend, not quite able to get through. Oh, and a snap of oversteer there. Off track, meanwhile, seemingly on his own, has gone Ulis Del So. So Del So with some dramas, and Pontinent has gotten through. So Pontinent has gotten past Capelli, and immediately he's under pressure from Christian Malcherek in the 24 car. So Malcherek looking to try and find a way of pass now. Not quite able to do it, though. Christian Malcherek in the 24 that he shares with Alan Day in the uh, UNASCAR Pro category. Leonardo Colavita, who races the 47 car across both categories, follows Malcherek. Kicking up at the grass there from Alberto Nasca. As Vladimir Osiortis continues to keep a watching brief, it looks as though Liam Hazeman has built enough of a gap here, but Nasca keeps running it wide around some of these longer corners. And he's just struggling for turning on uh, the longer bends. Hazeman's then across the line, and look at the gap he's got. He's got a good couple of seconds over Nasca. So as it stands again, three points would be the gap into the title decider. Still in favour of Alberto Nasca, but he would have a lot more work to do uh, if things finish as they are. And if he falls back behind Siortis, it would be even harder. Vladimir Siotsis, who started on pole position, will be very unhappy if he does finish in third place. He is not going to 
do anything too silly to jeopardize NASCAR's championship, but he's also not going to settle for third place just because a title deciding driver is up ahead of him. And you can tell that that's the case because once again, he's all over the back of NASCAR. NASCAR with a shallow entry there uh, into the kink before the back straight, and that could prove costly. There goes the number five car of Vladimir Osiortzis. Has he got the line? He's on the outside. I don't think he's quite going to get to the corner first. He doesn't, but he does try and cut to the inside. It's side by side as they go through the apex and just holding on is Alberto Nasca. No quarter given to Vladimir Osiortzis and he's going to hold on to second place, but it's a victory for Liam Hazemans and a big blow dealt to Alberto Nasca's championship lead. It will be just three points between them going into the decider. Dubek and Groot round out the top five ahead of Pontonen. But goodness me, what a performance from young Liam Hazemans, who is on great form here in the tail end of the season. Thanks to all my team, you know. Like, I mean, it was just, the car was just perfect. And yeah, no, exactly. It's closer than ever. I mean, the whole season. And yeah, so that's the first step. Now we try to do the second step tomorrow. And that is the first step to potential championship glory for Liam Hazemans. He's closed the gap down. Alberto Nasca feeling less certain than ever at the sharp end of the championship order. De Groot taking the Legend Trophy classification in this race. And the Lady Trophy going to Luli Del Castello, who's well on the way to a championship herself in the 54 car. But all eyes will be on Nasca and Hazemans in the Sunday decider at Grobnik.